Hello, and welcome to The Knit Girls. I'm Laura, also known as Lola. I am Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. Today is the 1st of January, 2019. And this is episode 421. Yep. We skipped last week because it was Christmas. We usually skip the week of Christmas. Um, the sound's still on because I can hear it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's turn that down. Whoops. Leslie got all comfy and I just made her move. Yeah. But hopefully that won't cause an echo. Yeah. For those five seconds. I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Um, yeah, so it's the new year. It is. It's 2019. Do you have resolutions? No, I don't do resolutions usually. Um, I mean, I kind of like have crafting plans in mind. Hey, do you mind bringing up Ravelry and I'll show you what I did with my crafting plans for the year? Do you want me to pull it up so they can see it? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, hang on so a what I did was a couple weeks ago, I went into my library tab. Oh yeah, and you have to be me too. Yeah, I can log out. Um, Chrome remembers your stuff, so. <laughs> so Leslie can pretend to be me. Um, okay, let's. That's pretty. The eye candy right now is really pretty. And it's this gorgeous hat. Window capture. edit this yeah. so that it's a little bigger. So that's the hat that I was just talking about that's really pretty. So this is Ravelry, if you're not familiar with Ravelry. Um, oh, apparently I'm controlling. Uh, I, I don't hate know this what you're keyboard. going to. Okay. So what I'm going to is under notebook, you can, oh, crud. Those are all my unfinished projects because I had it sorted by unfinished projects earlier. Um, you can go to library and one of the things that I've done in my library is you can add little um, folders. folders. I'll show you how to do that in a second. So I created a 2019 folder of some things that I wanted to complete in 2019. And I think it's 14 things. Yep, it is 14 things. So there's the Hudson shawl. There's the Yours slippers. Sock arms for me. A Carbeth ca uh, cardigan. I like to do this Canyonlands shawl mm. out of hand spun. Curtain call. I think that's the DK one. And I can pull up the pattern you too. You can just use the arrow keys too. Look at Leslie. She's teaching me how to use her crazy keyboard. Um, which comes with a coloring sheet too, which is cool. Worsted. Okay. Yep, that's the one that I bought the yarn that for. Space Perfect. Thank you that. So um, I bought Miss Babs for that. So this is all stuff that I have yarn for in my stash too. Um, comfort fade cardi. I have Miss Babs for that. Yowza for both these. Uh, mini mitts, which I'm going to use scraps for. Sour ball bonnet. The easy one and bulky. I have Jared Flood's quarry for that. A poly chevron cowl. Um, I have a Miss Babs kit for this. Neon Beast just calls for sock weight yarn. I got some of that. <laughs> Cherry soda or orange soda by Thea Coleman. And then I like to spin for the Nuvum. That's the only thing that I don't actually have. I have yarn that I could use for that. I have some um, Volmiza lace. But I like to spin for that. Because um, I really like Malia's hand spun mm -hmm. one. So those are all things that I put in my little tab. And I'll show you guys how to make a tab. So if I just go back to showing everything. I just got this really cute pattern. This is Pooch by Danny Sunshine. It is a baby hat. Oh, it won't let me do that. And what you can do on the right hand side is you can select sets and you can either create a new set or you can add it to your, this one I want to add to my hand spun. You can add it to a pre-existing set and you can add it to multiple pre-existing sets. So now it's in my 2019 too. And you can delete and you can also add notes like if I wanted to say use hand spun yarn I could add that note and that would be in there too so that's one thing look at how cute this baby hat is it's so adorable um, that's one thing that I did not really to create goals or resolutions, but to kind of organize my crafting for the next year. Look how cute that baby is. That is a very cute baby. All right, that's all I had to show you. You can get rid of that big thing in front of the baby in front of our faces. Mm -hmm. Bye, baby. <laughs> Bye, baby. 
But yeah, so I did that. Now I have 15 things in there. But I did that for some ideas of things that I already have um, yarn for and that I kind of want to do this coming year. I know some people do like the best nine and sort it that way. I just liked having, like in my library, I know I own those patterns. What's the best nine? Um, people were doing it on Instagram where they take like pictures of what they want to create and then they create like a three by three oh, like grid, grid. Okay. Mm -hmm. and put them there and maybe list them. But this, I think, will keep me a little bit more organized with, like, my patterns, and I won't have to be searching through patterns. I think you do well when you have a plan. Yeah, I do. So, I'm not saying I'm going to get to all of those, because I probably won't. Like, the new of them would be a very far out goal. But we'll see. Um, do you have any plans? I know you don't do resolutions, but do, have you made any plans or things that you would like to accomplish for 2019? I would like to spin up at least one of my processed fleeces. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I would like to make a couple of quilts. I would like to make Laura a quilt that doesn't turn into a Cripsize quilt when it gets washed. <laughs> that would be amazing. I like my new quilt. I've been using it on my couch quite a bit. It's It's got wool versus cotton. It's primarily wool batting. So it's been it's keeping warmer. me warm. My house just has been feeling cold, even though my heat says it's like 65 in there. Yeah. But, um, uh, I mean, I would like to knit a couple of realistic sweaters and by that I mean um, realistic for me because uh, there are so many beautiful sweaters out there and I have purchased most of them um, <laughs> but I run hot so it's unrealistic for me to think that I'm going to be able to wear a worsted weight turtleneck pullover it's just never gonna happen um, so I need to, I would like to knit a couple of sport or fingering weight sweaters for myself. Um, one of which I started uh, that I'll show you in a bit. But uh, And one you're most done with. But that is a worsted, well, DK weight sweater. But it's also woolen. I mean, woolen spin keeps you warmer, but it's lighter. It's a too. more realistic sweater for me because it's, it's it'll be elbow length and yeah. it's open and it's a layering piece, so it's easy to take off. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so really, I don't I don't have a ton <coughs> of things on my list. I just I want to be more thoughtful about what I decide to okay. do. I think that's a good plan. So. Um, knitting. You want to go, or would you like me to? Um, I'm just around and round and round. So if you want me to go, I can. Oh, I'm doing the same thing. Okay. Um, so I started a new project. It is I'm gonna do the Desert Vista Dye Works, uh, sock club, which is um Desert Vista Dye Works, which is owned by Susan. She sells self striping yarn, and um, she has like a knit along that lasts the whole year. And if you knit for like three months. So you have to start and finish a pair of socks every month, and they have to have at least a three-inch cuff. Um, yeah, all the rules are in Susan yep. Desert Vista Dye Works' um, group on Ravelry. So I was pulling out yarn the other day, and I noticed I had 13 skeins of her yarn again. And so, which is like what that number always stays at. Regardless of how many years I do this, it always seems to stay at 13. So I pulled out some and I'm going to participate this year. I just got started today because today is the first day of the month. This is bed knobs and broomsticks. I think this is one that um, she also has people help like post pictures, inspiration mm -hmm. pictures. And I think this is one of the inspiration pictures that I posted. So when you do that and she selects it, you get a free skein. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Um, this month's our plants. So people are posting pictures of plants or pictures of covers of books about plants and stuff like that. So, um, so this is Bed Knobs and Brood Six, which is a great book, but also a great movie with Angela Lansbury. It's one of Disney's first like animation. Have you ever seen that one? Uh, I've seen parts of it. Okay. Where it's like real people plus animation. Yeah. It takes place during World War Two, I believe. Yeah. Two. Um, so that is what I'm knitting on. I'm knitting on size zeros. So I just got started. 
right when we sat down to record. So I got a little bit, it's got this variegated section, then green, then there's a variegated section, and then I don't know what comes next. I'm guessing it's a blue. Or there's like another green in there. I don't know. It's going to be a surprise. So that is what I'm cast, I cast on the toe for. I'm going to do Wendy Johnson's toe up socks with a gusset heel. And I'm looking forward to getting those rocking and rolling. I go back to work tomorrow. So those are going to go with me and hopefully get some work as I sit in some meetings tomorrow. And that's living in a unicorn bag that I got at SSK this year from the fat squirrel. Because I need more unicorns in my life. Don't we all? <laughs> the other thing that I have on my needles is an old, old, old uh, project. It is Even Star by Susan Pandor. It is a giant shawl that looks hopefully like that when it's finished. Getting some weird light going on, some shade. So it's this giant circular shawl that's got an applied edging that's beaded. And I am right at the point where these the arches come these together. These arches are coming together. So um, I started working on this. One of the things that I did after my Christmas knitting was done is I decided not to cast on anything new and just work on some pre-existing projects. So I pulled this out and I knit around 4%, which is around seven rows, I would say. This is out of hand spun that I spun. Specifically for? Yeah, specifically for this project. And it is um, pretty fine. Mm -hmm. This is what the yarn looks like. Southern Cross Fiber. I did that for my Charms Owl a couple of years ago. And then it's kind of, it's hard to show because it's all... Yeah, lace just looks like cat yak until you it. does, it. but it's also on circular needles. I can hold so it and there's you can stretch the it if you want. Nah. I worry about it. These needles keep coming undone too. It's happened twice so far. And then there's that section of the lace. And then the panels, those and that's arches. Where your arches are coming together. Yep. So. And during that part, it's lace every row, right? It's patterned every row, oh, okay. yep. So there's other, um, like the row that I'm doing right now is knit one through the back loop, purl one, knit one through the back loop, purl one, knit 15, and then like the, the opposite, reverse. the reverse of that. So it's patterned on every row and it's slowly getting like less patterned. Mm -hmm. It used to be yeah, a lot of twisted stitches like down here was insane. Yeah. All those twisted stitches. Um, and there are some goofs every once in a while. Like that was supposed to, where those came together was supposed to be a, um, knit stitch, but it was pearl all the way up and I misread it yeah. and it's pearl and I don't think it makes no, I would never any difference. No. So I'm at 56% because I worked on it earlier and got two rows done. So quite a bit of work left to go on this. Um, and then blocking, which <laughs> I'm not certain how that's going to happen. I think what I'm going to do is do it on my lay down towels on my queen bed. Yeah. And go from the inside just out circularly and use wires on the outside. I don't know. Yeah, you may have to block the inside and the outside separately. Like block the inside until it's, you know, nice and stretched and laying out. And then block sections where you've got your wires to help. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you have a wide, flat space that's going to allow that sort of thing. Yeah, besides a bed. But, but like a the bed's not going to be big yeah. enough. The guess, because it's like 60 seven inches in circumference or something. Yeah, but if you if you account for all the wires and stuff yeah. on the edges, even a king size bed wouldn't be big enough, I don't think. Yeah. I don't know. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, we got a month before that bridge is an issue. So we'll see. And I have boards and um Yeah. Stuff like that. And we could buy more mats and stuff. Um like the cocoa knits, mats, or whatever else we need, but I'm not super. We'll figure it out. Yep. 
and my um, I've got I could do three tables in the garage but I'm still not certain that that would work I don't know we'll figure it out yep so that is the even star and it is in a chicken boots Luna bag and has been <laughs> for quite some time I started this back in 2017 so fall of 2017 so like September 2017 um, so it's oh. good to get it out why is my dog in here? Hey, Buff Buff. How are you? I'm gonna... You opened that door. Yeah, she did. <laughs> Somebody keeps opening this freaking door. Come on, Buff. <gasps> Bye, Come Buffy. On, so those are the two objects that I have currently being worked on on the needles. Um, I did propose a detention owl earlier. Um, so once a year, House Cup allows you to work on projects that... Um, as an owl that are in progress and kind of finish them off and it's always the first term of the year and only a certain number and only like 70 people are able to do it so i woke up at 2 a.m to submit my proposal well she'd like to say she woke up at 2 a.m but realistically she wasn't I was still asleep. Up at 2 a.m because um pearl does not like fireworks pearl's my dog and my neighbors do like fireworks, even though they're not supposed to like fireworks because it's not allowed in our county in within the city limits. So that was super fun. It's always super fun. And then people get on the like neighborhood app and are like, please don't set off fireworks. It's illegal. And you freak out our dog slash children. It reminds me And my me children of... don't want to be up at 2 a.m. with fireworks. It reminds me of how people... You know, every if you go to the main six boards on Ravelry in the for the love of Ravelry, uh -huh. every week there's a new a person who's relatively new to Ravelry who's like, why do people click the disagree <laughs> button? You know, and they mean well, but it's just one of those things where you're there's not going to be a positive outcome to this conversation. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you can mute your buttons. You can, and that is frequently suggested, but. I don't have any of those boards on my, um, any of the main six. I removed them from my boards. Oh, I just put them on a separate tab. So, like, if there's a new feature coming out or something and I want to go and see what Casey said about it, then I can go and take a there look. There is a new feature on Ravelry, y'all, that we are going to utilize for Cal's, and it's a no chatter feature where you can't reply to anyone but the original poster. Yeah. Um, it is a handy way. Super excited about that. To do that. Um... They're smart. Casey's a very smart dude, so. Yeah, the Harry Potter people were talking about how it would be awesome if they could pre-program things to, because people have to get up and set up those boards, too. Yeah. And unlock them at certain times, and how cool it would be if they could just set it, so that set it, it open. to, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do a lot of work for no pay, so. Yeah. They must just really love it, and that's cool. Good for them. Uh, okay, so knitting for me. I've got a couple of things on the needles, one of which is a pair of fingering weight socks. Uh, the yarn is by Knit Spin Farm, and it's the uh, Unusual Holidays or something holidays. Yeah, it's her club that she does. Yeah, um, and this one was like Nachos Day or Spicy taco? Guacamole Day. Oh, okay. Um, I'm pretty sure that's accurate. And I'm just doing the vanilla bean pattern. I did it with a flat heel. I have no idea what heel the pattern said. I just wanted a flat heel uh, with just slip stitches down the heel. Nothing super fancy. Um, I'm that's getting number one, right? This is number one. Yeah, okay. this is just my in between other projects project. Um, I'm getting close to where I'm going to start decreasing for the toe, but probably still a couple of colors away. So that's project number one. I knit my socks on 2.25 millimeter needles, which is a U.S. size <laughs> one. The other thing I made some good progress on this week was Uma. Uma is a pattern by Chic Knits. It is a an open cardigan with pockets. Um, there we go. Bonnie Marie Burns is the designer. It's been out for a while, several years. Um, and it's been in my pattern for most of those years, or in my queue, sorry, for most of those years. Uh, I'm knitting the, ugh, all these are out of order. 
Um, I'm knitting the 50 inch size, which is gives me like two inches of positive ease, which is plenty for me because it's an open cardigan. Um, and the last time that I showed it, um, I was knitting down from under the arm until I got to X length so I could start the pockets. And then I went back and read and that X length was supposed to be measured from the top of the shoulder and not under the arm. So I had already passed that point and I was not ripping back. I hate ripping back. Um, if it's more than, you know, half an hour's work, I will do anything to avoid it. So I just, um, you did the pockets a little bit different. I did. So this yarn is, uh, Harrisville Nightshades. Harrisville Tweed, the Nightshades collection. This is the 1257 colorway, which is uh, black Cordell, or Cormo, sorry, with brown marled flex in it. And um, this is a DK weight yarn. It's covered in animal hair. <laughs> sorry, it, that's just life. Uh, mostly pearl how hair are, that yeah, I can see. Yeah, how are you uh, liking working that with that wool, though? I really like it. Like, Good. Um, Maybe they'll come out with a fingering weight at some point. The annoyance of it being black to knit with, even though it's something I'll wear all the time because it's black, knitting with black is not always super practical. Um, but that is far outweighed by the pleasure of actually using the yarn. Oh, good. So... I had gotten several inches past where I should have done the pockets. Come up here and show you guys. Um, and the way the pocket was written was you got to whatever the point was, and then you basically put X number, let's say 30 stitches. There is a lot of pearl hair I know, on, that. on a holder, and then you cast on that same number and then just kept going, and then you would come back and knit down. For the inside of the pocket but what I did instead was I just knit down until a couple of rows before the button band started I doubled my stitches by doing a knit front and back for those that 30 stitches or whatever and then I put half of those on a holder like every other stitch on mm -hmm. a holder like you're doing double knitting almost yeah um, so I put every other stitch on a holder and then continued down to knit the button band, which was, or just the band rather, which is just a inch and a half of ribbing. And then I came back and picked up those stitches I had put on a holder and knit up. The pocket was only called for it to be four inches deep. I made mine five just because my phone is like six inches tall. So I prefer it to be a little deeper. Cause that's and really... I dropped my phone and cracked the cover this week. Yeah, so... just the screen protector. Yeah, but it still was like, yeah. <gasps> When did phones become such a big thing? Yeah. So, um, right now they're just, the pockets are just flaps. I need to tack them down. So that's what I'll do. The only, um, seaming that I'll have to do pocket wise is just tacking down the sides. And I made the edges just a slip, I slipped the first stitch on both sides. So it's a nice, even selvage. Uh, and you're just going to tack them down, right? Yeah. I'm just going to tack them. I left long ends from where I cast on. So I could just use those ends to tack down one fewer end to weave in. Um, and now, so what's left is sleeves and I'm doing elbow length. And then once you're done with sleeves, you come and tack down the back of the collar. Refer to previous episodes on the insanity of this collar. <laughs> uh, but I got the short row shaping done for... Oh, that looks good. For this sleeve. Yeah. Um, she has you pick up the sleeve with DPNs two sizes smaller. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as you start knitting, you switch to bigger ones. That's what, um, whatchamacallit did for the... Novus? Thing? No, the straight sleeves. Oh, the sock, sock arms. arms. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, so I guess that it, it's a much and tighter joint. Yeah, and if your stitches look wonky here, you can actually pull them down. Like, you can pull them tighter oh. and weave in the loose length at the bottom. Yeah. If they were. That's smart. Um, yeah, so I, I got the cap of the sleeve done. And while I was watching the new George R. R. Martin series on sci-fi, uh, 
Night Flyer. It's a science fiction slash horror, and apparently it's based off of a, a book or something he wrote. I didn't know that before I started watching it. And at the end of the first episode, his big old face comes up and he's telling you about, you know, the inspiration behind it. And I already liked the show at that point, so I was like, fine, I'll watch it. <laughs> um, I'm not a huge fan of George R. R. Martin's writing itself. I like the stories, I just don't like the way he specifically writes them. I, I don't know why. It's a weird thing. But anyway, that's the sleeve. I'm very happy with it. I really like this texture pattern. Um, it's simple, but effective. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You can tell that that part's not been at my house. Yeah, this little bit, because there's, there's no pearl fur on it. And the rest of the... White fur is my dog. Yeah, the rest of the sweater does have quite a large amount of white pearl for big loves, long like, yeah she loves her auntie leslie and i love her but she does tend to leave <laughs> little goodies reaching everywhere. to the choir so in regards to fur but that's it i have no spinning and i have no finished objects okay i have um several finished objects because i was going back and instead of starting new things i was finishing things yep so um i have quite a few things to show so the very first thing that I finished today is these needles. I was actually out of sock needles and I had to finish something in order to be able to start a new pair of socks. So I did finish those lollipop yarn socks that have been on the needles forever. These are, I think this was the Cabin Fever colorway, but I'm not 100% certain. I think I started these last February maybe. Um, and kind of just stalled on them. I had cast on like 16 stitches then went up to 60 for some reason. Usually I do 64. Um, and used Wendy's gusset, toe up gusset pattern. So those are completely done. They're not quite a hundred percent matchy matchy, but a year went by in between knitting them really. The second one I knit in like two days, three days really. Yeah. Um, and then the first one took eight months. So it is what it is. Those are done. Yay. And those are for me. So new socks for me. Very neutral socks for me. Yeah. But with black. Um, I finished this hat. This is the Ribbed Beanie by Wooly Wormhead. Let's see if I can get my hair out. I knit this for one of my coworkers. He drives a bus in the mornings, and I figured it's like a cashmere alpaca blend and keep him nice and warm. So good free pattern, good for guys. And this is out of um, Plucky Snug. It was knit on size nines, I believe. So yeah. And um, the only modification I made is I felt like it was a little bit too short so I added a row in between the decreases for a little bit which is not what it called for it just called for decreases on every round so yeah I think it looks okay yeah it's just a simple ribbed beanie so hopefully that'll keep him nice and warm I don't like how it's like but when it's on you can't see that they're where I gathered the stitches mm -hmm. it's a little pointed I don't know why because I probably gathered them weird and oddly. And then I also finished the Milo that I was knitting for Sadie's little one, which I can leave here. Yes, you can. Because you are collecting all the things. And this is out of Lost City Knits, Low Country DK. Oh, so cute. And this is the three to six month size. So I did like one size up from the smaller one. So, and I just did a um, eight stitch cable, four to the front, knit four, cable off. So it's got some nice variegation in it. Yeah, I dig it. So, and it matches the little mitts, because that's the same. Oh, yarn. Yarn. And uh, used up all that yarn for the most part, so. Are the mitts here? Yes. Okay. Somewhere. I'm handing that to you. And then the last thing, I finished six of these, but I only have two left because I gave them as Christmas presents. I knit a bunch of stars. It's a pattern by Hunter Hammerson. It's a tidbit fiddly. Scintillation. 
Yeah, um, they're knit on size ones. It's using worsted weight. I kind of have to imagine, I have like some stitcher, stitches on a magic loop as I'm using 60 PNs on the other side. So it does get a little bit fiddly. And this is Painter's Palette by another crafty girl. Her worsted weight. But I really like, uh, when you buy the pattern you get like several different options. So this is the 100 stitch star. And it's just the sock net version. So I made six of those. I'm doing. You used up cute. some scraps. I thought they were super cute. So that was part of the Christmas gifts. And now Holly, who watches this, is going to know. But she won't be back at Knit Group till the 9th, I think. Oh, wow. Um, and then the last thing that I have is kind of weird. So um, a couple weeks ago, I correspond these lights. They're still waiting to go to their place, their home. And I had the rest of the bat left over. So I started core spinning on a mohair core. And usually when I core spin, I run the um, mohair through the opposite direction right. to add some twist opposite, which then I would take out and it becomes more balanced. But I didn't do that this time. So I ended up Navajo plying it to rebalance it. Um, it's so squishy and soft. It's <laughs> squishy, but it's so, it's such a weird yarn. But it it's, is. it's lots of fun. I highly recommend, like, if you've never tried this technique and you know how to core spin, definitely try it. So you core spin one direction and then you ply it back the other direction and it creates this, like, super bulky, super warm because it's got this mohair core plus all the air that's trapped in and two levels of plying, basically. Yeah. Um, it's really, really an interesting piece. And this was out of a bat called Forget Me Not by Dun Spun. It was a wool blend lamb fleece. And the lamb fleece was like raw locks. Oh. Um, well, washed locks and dyed. Bamboo Angelina Fire Star, 2.1 ounces. And I got 38 yards out of what I had left. So... But it is like a super bulky. It's fun to weave with. I've woven with this yeah, on I was a tapestry say, that's like loom a, before. It's not something, it's not a process you would do for production spinning because it doesn't get you a lot for the time invested. No. But it is a really cool like accent yarn for something. Yeah, or I've knit a hat out of this yarn, not this yarn, but a similar yarn that I did for an owl a couple years ago. And it is such a warm hat. Um, so... It's just a fun little spin. It'll probably get used for weaving or something along those lines. It's pretty. Yeah. Yep. I'm happy with it. I have some other spinning, but it's still wet, so I didn't want to bring it over because last time I brought something that was wet, I forgot about it in my bag when I went home, and then did not, and I found it like a week later. So I'm trying to not bring over wet. <laughs> yarn anymore because I feel like that's not going to ever because I always forget because yeah. we record at like 7 30 and night. by the time you get home Pearl needs something I need something yeah so I need some time by myself so <laughs> this is all my social interaction I need yeah <laughs> um that's it for me do you want to talk about books oh sure. I've been talking for a while uh so let me go down here so next week we're reviewing Nomadic Knits um, second issue, which it's is the New York issue. Yeah, right? it's the New York yeah. issue, and we were going to review it this week. But when I got to the point where I was pulling it up, there's so many really interesting tidbits in the articles that go along with the patterns, and Laura hadn't had a chance to read them yet. I hadn't. I just so, looked at the patterns. Um, I, I wanted to give it the time it deserved, so uh, we're going to review that next week. Um, there's some really pretty stuff in it, though. And we had two weeks worth of crafting, so yeah. there's a little bit more to talk about than usual. So what are you reading, my friend? So for books, um, I am listening to the Throne of Glass series because the last book came out in October. It did. I need to buy that for my library. And um, it's so big. Yeah, it is significantly larger than the others. Uh I've been re-listening to all of them, and I got, I'm on the fifth book now, which is Kingdom of Ash. Um, it's the one right after the battle at the castle where the king is killed, and then Kaol is sent off to where the healers are, but his story is the next book. Um, so it's a lot of, like, political maneuvering in this book, and that's my least favorite 
part because I just don't care. Just tell me what happens. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm taking breaks on this one. So I'm also uh, listening to. Um, I'm not listening to. Well, I listened to the Christmas episode of My Dad Wrote a Porno, which was hilarious. Um, but also, I'm listening to We Are Legion, uh, We Are Bob, which is an audible um, story by Dennis Taylor, but it's uh, narrated by the guy who does a lot of the, uh, oh, the book by the fold. Not Ernest Klein, but Peter Klein's. Um, so it's narrated by that same guy, and I really like him. It's hard when you find, like, a good audiobook narrator. I'm like, I don't care what else right. the Books genres are you're reading. I just want to listen to your voice. Yeah, so I've, I've been listening to that um, on and off in between. And reading, I read a book that I really liked, and I kept meaning to tell you about it. It's a, it's a reverse harem, which can be really weird and awkward um once they get into the logistic part of it that's not this book first book uh in the series is called the lost and the chosen it's by ivy asher huh. this is her first book she's that's on amazon um and it just came out in november so the second book i have no idea when it's going to come out but i really liked the first book uh, and it's kindle unlimited hmm. so the lost and the chosen i i liked it was um an interesting concept and then the second book to the sin and chocolate came out today um, it's Ed. Sin and Magic. Are you done with it already? No. Oh, okay. I just started it. I'm like... I had to knit today. 20% into it. <laughs> and I said to get my house cup stuff organized. Oh, I yeah. have like a bullet journal that I do for house cup. So um, I had to get that organized. But yeah, Sin and Magic. This is the one where it's like... They're demigods like Poseidon um, in San Francisco. and Well, it's his son and then grandson. So oh, the right, evil Valen. guy is his son, Valen, and then his grandson, whose name I Kay forget. something. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. The main protagonist in the book. Whatever. Um, the main love interest in the book. It begins with a K, right? I it's don't got remember. to. Anyway, um, but it's it's a pretty decent book. Yeah, um, and that's by K. F. Breen, and she's got several other series out there as well. What about you? I'm reading. Cinemagic, and I'm listening to the third. I'm to the third Kate Daniels. That's good. So I've been doing some listening. Uh, you don't Magic strikes. Get nearly as much listening in as I do. You... I get maybe half an hour a day. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, just when I get home and I'm knitting. Um, because those days when I used to be able to sit and craft for five hours when I get home, those days are long gone. I feel like like I come home and do more work mm -hmm. or do work for SSK, but that's cool too. Um, I'm not complaining. I get enough done. So, like, when I'm crafting, I tend to... And when Leslie comes over, we watch things like Project Runway All-Stars or... Fresh Paint. Fresh Paint or, um, Drag Race. Yes. Or holiday baking shows or Dumplin'. whatever. Dumplin' was good, yeah. So we watch random TV, and so, um, I get some crafting done then. But, we have strong opinions too. on reality TV. <laughs> I want to, so I'm like intrigued by this new Fox show where it's like the masked oh singer and she has no interest in it. Oh, but I kind of want, but I'm not going to know anyone who's masked because it's going to be like these boy band people. Yeah, I don't, that's, I just I'm don't. never going to know. It's not going to be like uh, Lady Gaga yeah. or anyone. Although it would be hilarious if it was. Oh, son of a. Did you drop a stitch somewhere? No, I forgot this was patterned and not stocking it. One, two, crap. Well, so, that's what I've been reading. Um, our next craft along video is going to be um, the 12th of January in 2019. It says 2018 up there. Yeah, I'll fix it. Um, and Leslie's going to send out a poll tomorrow. Hopefully. Tomorrow. I've got she a reminder. On a reminder for the time in the craft for people to choose from. Uh, we did add some new Patreon rewards levels since we can't do the um, random drawings anymore. And we renamed them so that they're all Hitchhiker, because now you have to name them. So they're all Hitchhiker Guides to the Galaxy references. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for all the fish. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, the first level kind of stays the same. It's the dollar level. And with that, you get access to the craft uh, along that we do once a month. 
Um, and our sincere thanks. Mm -hmm. And then the second level now, we're going to start writing a newsletter that's um, going to be a little bit of what trends we see, what new products, some reviews. Yeah, it'll be a once a month thing and it'll be mm -hmm. like just jam packed with stuff we like and stuff that's cool that we think is cool. Yeah, so. and you'll get everything that's on the lower levels as well. Yeah. Um, and then the third level now is going to be, we're going to do once a month, an hour long, like... Knit night or question or answer. question and answer, just more time. And all those recorded things um, will vary the time, but also, and the day... But also, you'll be able to access them later on the pa Patreon mm -hmm. platform. And then our last level um, is still the same, where you get all the previous levels, but you also get... Um, Your name comes up as a co-executive creative genius at the end of the show. Um, it gets displayed on the screen so everybody can know how fabulous you are. <laughs> so those are the levels that we kind of added. Um, thank you guys for all your ideas yes. that you suggested, people who suggested ideas. And we might change and add some more levels at some point too, but we thought we'd give this a try for the new year. Yeah. Um, we still have the nautical giveaway. It'll be open until episode 422 because that's what I said. And I don't like to change things after we've already said it. Yep. Um, in a month, in a month and a half, we'll be at Madrona, so that's super exciting. We're taking the Clemens and Clemens drum carding class, but yep. if you do see us, stop us and say hi. Yes. Last time we took swag to some place on the West Coast, I lost my luggage. <laughs> so, when they asked us to describe what was in my luggage, I was like, around 150 Nate Girls packs. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. We'll probably be carrying on on the way there, at least. And then um, the Striped Socks Yarn Knit Along just ended on the 31st yesterday. of December yesterday. So thank you everyone who participated. I think we had like three people who did all three, uh, the whole year. Like all three of them did the whole wow. year. So I'm going to give them special prizes. Yes. But I'm spinning a prize for last month um, and you'll see that next week. And then we we're going to talk about vendors. Oh, okay. For SSK. So we do have a couple of vendors whose contracts are en route. We don't have them yet. So this is a mostly complete list of vendors. I'm sorry if you can hear random drilling. I have no idea what my husband's doing. <laughs> um, welcome to my life. But he did take down the scaffolding that Dude, he bought. Dude, seriously. <laughs> I had, so Laura and I occasionally have stress SSK dreams. <laughs> you won't believe this one. I didn't even tell you. This one. So, well, one of the random dreams I had was that I was giving birth and had no idea who the father was <laughs> or that I was pregnant. So that was just a random little snippet. But I had a dream where it was SSK day, like the first day uh -huh. of SSK. And for some reason, all the SSKers got dropped off on school buses to my house. <laughs> and there was like a mix and mingle. <laughs> at your house. At my house, right. Yeah. Because that's, that's totally never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then Michael set up the scaffolding no. to pull the car on. <laughs> but that happened, and I was talking somebody to one of the new SSKers, and we were standing in the backyard looking at something, and we walk back to the front, and the buses are gone, and everybody's gone except this new person whose name I don't even know. <laughs> and I'm like, I'll take you to at the site or whatever, and we get into my car. And the brakes don't work, and so we almost die. And then we decide it's time to go to dinner, and we park the car in like a, a monitored lot downtown Nashville. And the guy wants to spend the whole time flirting with the chick I'm with, <laughs> like the attendant, <laughs> rather than just giving me my parking ticket thing. <laughs> this is very involved. <laughs> it is. Um, it goes on, but I'm just going to... Anyway, so I wake up from that feeling <laughs> super disoriented and walk out into my living room, and I no longer have a living room. It is a construction site with two giant layers of bright orange scaffolding. So <laughs> in the hour nap that I took, Michael constructed all this. Not only did he construct it, there were warning signs hanging, handmade by <laughs> Michael, all over <laughs> the scaffolding so you wouldn't hit your head. P.S. I'm short enough I walked right under it. <laughs> And the, the walls. <laughs> I love that he made him. There's only three of you in the house. They were all over it. And the um, 
wall socket where the switch is because he was replacing the ceiling fan and we have like a vaulted, uh, vaulted ceiling. ceiling in the living room huge waste of space but anyway um so he had the the light switch <laughs> You're like making me cry laughing about that that controlled it he had opened it because he had to test some wire or something mm -hmm. and he had handmade little notes that went over it that <laughs> said no please don't touch you know <laughs> I'm like, you could have just looked at me and said, don't touch that. It would have been perfectly fine. But no, we had to go through all of this insanity. But Aww. it's done. We have a new ceiling fan. It's gorgeous. It's up there. I, I told him after he took down the last of the scaffolding, I was looking at it and I smirked. And he's like, what? I was like, that's the ugliest ceiling fan I've ever seen. <laughs> it's not. It's fine. But, it's gorgeous. I mean, I picked it out, but... Um, you just wanted to mess with it. And then I, when I came in, she told me to tell him that it's ugly. She wouldn't, though. Because <laughs> I'm a kind individual. Hey, but he did come over and install your fancy new lock thing. Yeah. Huh? I have a biometric lock on my door to keep me nice and safe and yeah. secure. Um, that was my Christmas present from Leslie and Michael. It was a good one. So, my favorite story is when Michael was texting you, Leslie came over for New Year's <laughs> last night. And oh, there's yeah. Fireworks Let me pull it up. Out. I'm just going to read it to you Going verbatim. Um, yeah. I was at Laura's until, like, 10-ish last yeah, night. Yeah, like 10.30, and then she left because this happened. Um, and we were both laughing so hard, it was insane. Uh, okay. So, I told him that I was leaving in 20-ish minutes, and did he need anything on the way home? And he says, no thanks, I'm good. Uh, Neelix is freaked the hell out. I stopped what I was doing to calm him down, and he is finally laying down behind me in my office. Buffy is doing much better. Buffy and Neelix are my dogs. Um, and neither of them are big fans of loud noises like fireworks. Yeah. Um, and I said, oh yeah, she tends to hide and shiver. And he says, she was just watching me work in the living room and didn't seem quite as nervous as usual. Neither would eat treats though. Neelix somehow got behind the washing machine. <laughs> Which is up against the wall. It's, it's like we have a laundry room and there's a washing machine all the way in like in the corner and then... Before you get to the washing machine, when you walk in the door, there's a dryer. So somehow, my dog... Who's like 40 pounds. Yeah. I mean, he's... He's a whippet. Yeah. Somehow got behind the dryer, which he would have had to... Or the washer. He would have had to get behind the dryer somehow to get behind the washer. And also, how did he move those? Those things are like 50 pounds a piece. Like... So he made his way. I got. I got this to, is how like mice and stuff get in houses because you're like, how did they get through that hole? And Laura and I are just like, just weeping, <laughs> just laughing so, so hard. Funny. And I was like, because I just picture him back there, like, <laughs> just shivering. Just, yeah. You know. All and I was like, how likes. did he do that? And Michael has no idea. But he came right now. Okay, yeah. Call them, Michael. Pearl would be like, peace. Yeah. I live here. I'm now. great. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so that it is... was blue. My next stripe. It's pretty. Yeah, I like it. Um. Yeah, so hopefully this is not an indication of how 2019 is going to be. Oh, vendors for SSK. Oh yeah, totally. Also, I cleaned up the SSK boards. I added a new um, commonly asked questions thread, a new admin thread, and I started the knit alongs. And part of that was talking about the vendors at SSK. So. People that, oh, why did I not link Suburban Stitcher? Anyway, I'll have to go back and link her. Somehow that got messed up. Um, some vendors that we have coming in 2019, Suburban Stitcher, yep. who sells bags and gorgeous yarns. This will be her excited. first year with us. Acreworks is coming back. Super excited. And he sent us his new... Um, knit kit. Knit kit. And then his new uh, quotable maker quotes. Yeah, the Elizabeth Zimmer one. And um, so those are super cool. So we'll have to share those at some point. Desert Vista Dye Works is coming back. This will yes. be like her third time vending, I think. She can't, She vended like the first two, I think. Third or fourth. I can't remember if yeah. she was there the third year or not. And then Savannah went to high school. Yeah. And we lost her for four years. Yeah. And now she's back. So that's super exciting. Yeah. Lollipop Yarn will also be there. Mm -hmm. We love Joan. Yeah. And this she does like every other year mm -hmm. typically. So that's pretty awesome. Hip Strings will be back. Yep. Nick and, um, oh my God, Jill. <laughs> It's like, I know her. I'm looking right at her in my head. <laughs> um, they come down from Pittsburgh. They have awesome really individually cool blends. blended a fiber and then also blended yarn as well. Yeah. That's who I did the Pittsburgh box from. Um, Whimsy Stitches, who does yarn. Uh -huh. We have some of his yarn right here. Rick. 
And then he also does really cool bags. He's doing the leading men. They're doing a kit oh, for the cool. year end. And that's who's making oh, the bag, is it? the okay. library bag. Um, so he does some really cool, like, bags that sometimes involve clear plastic, sometimes don't. He's really neat. He'll be there. Fat Squirrel Fibers will be there with her bags. We love Amy Bass. Mm-hmm. She just did a great episode yes. on body positivity. It's like the mentality behind. So she did an episode about how to um, adjust patterns to fit you, if you're a larger person especially, how to sort of grade them yourself to, to make them fit you. But she had people ask a request that she talk about the mentality of it as well because um if if you are lucky enough to not to fit into what is considered a normal body size then you probably don't have to deal with things like feeling like you're not worth investing the money into the yarn to create the item because if you're a larger person it costs more Mm -hmm. to do that sort of thing and you don't see large people often you know out there modeling this sort of thing so you don't feel like it's something you deserve and anyhow Amy Beth did just a brilliant and lovely um, explanation on how it works for her um, and everybody is different, but it's totally worth your time listening to. Yep. So it's not a long episode either. It's like thirty minutes, maybe. Yeah. Um. So she'll be there with her awesome bags. Miss mm-hmm. Babs will be back. We love Miss Babs and Jen. We adore them. So they'll be back again. Jerry Brock Woodworks will be back with some really cool spindles. She had cell phone stands this year that I, I kind of regret not getting. I use mine every day. And she does uh, bobbins and other really she cool stuff. She does, like, ankle weaving, the cards and all that, um, as well as the shuttles. Um, Leading Men Fiber Arts will be back. So we'll see Steve, but not Andy, because Andy says it's his Steve-cation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we talked to them at SAF about that. And Steve comes to SSK. They're at Disney right now. And look like they're having a great time. Um, Star Knits will be back. I got a rope basket from mm-hmm. her last year that I use every single time I spin. I love that thing and I need some more. So I'm super excited she's coming back. Spotted Circus Alpacas and Llama. Elizabeth will be back. She, she is, also does great blends. Yes. And, um, and she knows her stuff about just really, and she's got a really cool podcast as well. Um, um, Fiber Circus. Fiber Circus, yes. So she'll be there. Gail's Art, who we adore, will be there. And she has some really cool new yarns that she debuted at SAF. Yeah, like see. Big Girl. Oh, it, was, the, the, it was a bigger weight yarn, and it was something like Big Girl or something It was like, like a DK weight that had, like, a ton of yardage or something. Yeah, and she also is now doing these really cool, like, glue-resist or wax-resist dyed fabric um, that I want to get my hands on. So... She always manages to innovate, which we appreciate. Yeah, two guys will be there, and they mm-hmm. always have really interesting. They hand mill their yarns, yep. so they're really interesting. Teeny Button Studio, who does a lot of Harry Potter themed stuff, will be there, and mm-hmm. she's got a really cool cotton fingering weight. Yep. Uh, it's like a cotton wool fingering weight that I just love. Uh, Bumblebee Acres, who does a lot of different fandoms, but also has like a super wash Cordale base sock. Um, I just did her advent kit, yep. and I, while I haven't knit any of it, I really enjoy the colors, and I've done her um, clubs, her spinning fiber clubs in the past, and really enjoyed them as well. And then Spotted U Fibers, who mm-hmm. has a new spinning wheel. Electric wheel, wheel that's going to come out, which is pretty cool. They'll be there as well. Um, we also have a couple more vendors um, that we, we just don't have contracts yet, they're, they're en route, so... We, we don't talk about them until we have a signed contract because yeah. we don't want to disappoint you guys if something changes. Um, it, it was probably the hardest it's ever been this year. I think so. We went back and forth quite a bit. Yeah, it took us days, really, to decide. Um, we intentionally keep the SSK market small, um, which is, you know, a, a double-edged sword. It's, it can get really crowded in there. Um, when we do it, but we keep it small because we want it to be profitable for the people that come and we try to, Laura especially is really good at, um, (laughs) reminding us to not have too much of any one specific thing. So like we will never have more than three self stripers. Right. Because then nobody makes enough. Or three bag makers. Yeah. Yeah. We try to, to really balance it and keep it fresh with some, 
favorites and some new people. We we don't have room for everybody we want to come. We wish we did. I mean, we had to have a couple of really hard, sad no's this year with people who've been there before. We yeah. just couldn't... There just wasn't room. So, anyhow, that's enough of our tale of love. <laughs> a lot of thought goes into it. So, we, we hope that the market is a good experience for you guys. And for our vendors, you know. Because yes. it's a lot of work for them to come up and even though it's a it's, five, 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 oh, we're changing the hours. Did we talk about that? I put it on the, um, I put it on the question thing. Okay. So I put a schedule of events with the new schedule of events. Okay. So I put that up on the board. So that way, if people are booking tickets or whatever, they can see exactly what time everything is, or if they're trying to make plans with right. friends. Um, it's already listed on the frequently asked question. The shuttle information and the airport information is also listed there. You are the man. And the, no, that's as far as I got. Um, <laughs> that's all I did. And the cows, the charity cow and the teacher cow. So, um, yeah, I'll be adding to the frequently asked question thread as people ask questions. And then the tag, whip tags going on in there as well. Um, and I have two people waiting on spots like for two more people to join. So if you're interested, you can just play for a month. Um, the forum and all that's in the SSK group. Uh, we did pull from the wait list. Um, we, it was somewhere around 14 on site and, and four, four uh, day pass. Day pass. Um, yeah. I've already heard back from one person who can't come. I expect, you know, we'll have one or two more. Mm -hmm. Um, and, then and then we'll immediately repull. We'll pull again as soon as we hear back from all those people. Yeah. So, um, I think that's. And I put that we had pulled so that people good. could see on okay. there too. Um, and we've had a couple people ask us like where they are on the wait list. Uh, the way that we do our wait list is by random number generator. So everybody's on the wait list. So let's say that there are ten people on the wait list. If we have... You have a one in ten chance. Yeah. If there are three spots open, then I pull up random.org and I say, give me three numbers between one and ten, and those three people get in. So every time, it's a brand new set of odds. Um, it's That's just the only fair way we know to do it. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. Let me go back yeah, to I show notes. Yeah, I think that's all we've got today. That better be all we got today. Yeah, because we're like an, an hour, hour in. <laughs> um, I'm going slow on this row because I'm having to drop down every other stitch oh, to fix. Oh, and fix. fix. Mm. At least I don't have to go. I'll do that versus go back three oh, rounds. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Completely. Uh, Alright, well we will see y'all next week. Um, Happy New Year. Yes, and we hope that you accomplish all of your goals this year. <laughs> Bye y'all.